You might have come across the term Kali Linux in many videos, including mine, but the reality is a lot of people are still unfamiliar with it. So, what exactly is Kali Linux? In this video, we're going to learn deeply about Kali Linux, where it comes from, who created it, and everything else you need to know. By the end of this video, you'll never ask about Kali Linux again, promise. Before diving into Kali Linux, it is better to understand Linux. All of you might have used Windows for at least one time in your life. Linux is also an operating system like Windows, but the good thing is that Linux is a free and open source operating system, which means anyone can study and modify the source code according to their needs. In fact, you can make your own Linux-based operating system with some research. Linux is known for its command line interface, but that's not your only option. You can also use graphical buttons to navigate and perform many tasks. Linux is widely used in web servers, but it's also gaining popularity as a desktop choice due to its compatibility and low system requirements. I think that is enough introduction to Linux. Now, let's move to our main topic of discussion, which is Kali Linux. Basically, Kali Linux is a Linux distribution designed for digital forensics and penetration testing. Or in simple terms, it is a Linux-based operating system mainly used for ethical hacking. It has more than 600 hacking tools. We will explore them later in this video. Kali Linux grew in popularity after being featured in multiple episodes of the Mr. Robot series. It is a popular choice among professional ethical hackers as well as beginners. It is based on the Debian Linux distribution and runs on a wide spectrum of devices. As discussed earlier, it is an open source build means that it is free and legal to use in a wide range of enterprise scenarios. Now let's take Take a look at the history of Kali Linux. Kali Linux has a rich history in security testing, learning a lot from earlier projects. The journey began with Wopix, a security-focused version of Nopix. Wopix had versions ranging from 2.0 to 2.7. On July 17, 2005, Wopix transformed into Wax, also called White Hat Slacks. The name change reflected the switch from Nopix to Slacks as the base operating system. Another project, Auditor, was also in development. Together, Wax and Auditor merged to form Backtrack. Backtrack initially used different operating systems, but later switched to Ubuntu for versions 4 and 5. Finally, in 2013, Kali Linux arrived. It built upon the knowledge gained from Backtrack. The first version of Kali Linux was called Kali Linux Moto. Today we're using the latest version, Kali Linux 2024.1. But the question is who created it? Kali Linux was primarily developed by Mati Aharoni and Devon Kearns of Offensive Security. It was a rewrite of a previous project, Backtrack Linux, which was also designed for penetration testing. If we talk about offensive security, it was a team made up of security professionals with extensive experience of attacking systems to see how they respond. It was founded in 2007. Mattia Haroni is the CEO of Offensive Security. Okay, now let's explore. How can we install Kali Linux in different ways? Right now we're on the official Kali Linux website and they offer several ways to get started. Let's break them down one by one. But before we start, ensure Ensure your system meets the minimum requirements. Kali Linux needs at least 20 GB of disk space and 2 GB of RAM. However, for a smoother experience, 4 GB of RAM and 80 GB of space are recommended. I won't provide detailed installation instructions here, but I'll guide you through the various methods and recommend helpful video tutorials for each. So, our first method is Installer Image. This method installs Kali Linux directly on your system. Similar to installing Windows, you'll have full control over over your hardware. Following are some video tutorials to help you with the installer image method. Another way to install Kali Linux is by using virtual machines. VMs are popular because they allow you to run multiple operating systems on your existing system at the same time. Kali Linux offers pre-built VM images for easy setup. Here are some videos that can help you install Kali Linux in VMs. Single board computers are tiny computers on a single board. They're a great option for learning about hardware and software. The Raspberry Pi is a popular SBC and Kali Linux provides images for it, along with other SBCs. Here are some videos to help you learn more about SBCs. Kali Linux also offers mobile images called Kali NetHunter. These let you install Kali Linux on your smartphone for mobile penetration testing. Here are some video tutorials to help you understand Kali NetHunter better. If you'd prefer not to install anything on your own machine, cloud providers like Amazon, Linode, and Azure offer ready-made Kali Linux instances. This is a great option for quick access. You can directly buy and use them 
anywhere. The following video tutorials may help you. For those who want to try out Kaylee tools without a full installation, containers are a lightweight solution. Tools like Docker and LXD allow you to run Kaylee tools within your existing operating system. If you want to know more about Docker and how all these work, you can watch the following videos. Another awesome feature of Kali Linux is Live Boot. The Kali Live image lets you boot your computer directly into a full Kali environment using a USB drive. This is a perfect portable option. You can use Kali Linux on any system without alerting the base system. Watch the following video tutorials to know more about Live Boot. Finally, we have WSL or Windows Subsystem for Linux. WSL lets you run Linux distributions, including Kali, directly on your Windows system. This is a convenient way to access both Windows and Kali functionalities. You can watch the following video tutorials to make your way clear to WSL. Now that's enough talk, let's move to our Kali Linux desktop and learn more about it. Right now we're looking at the default desktop environment in Kali Linux, which is XFCE. During installation, you can choose from other options like GNOME, KDE, Plasma, and Cinnamon. Research these environments online to see which best suits your needs. Personally, I like XFCE because of its Kali undercover mode. This feature changes the theme to resemble Windows, making it less conspicuous for those who might be peeking over your shoulder. While Firefox comes pre-installed, Kali Linux lets you install virtually any browser you prefer. It's also highly customizable. You can change themes and personalize your experience. Each desktop environment has a community that develops unique themes for it. To access the command line interface, we use terminals. This is where you'll run commands and delve deeper into the world of hacking. If you're interested in learning some basic Kali Linux commands, check out these helpful videos. Tools are the lifeblood of any Linux system, but especially for ethical hackers and penetration testers. Kali Linux contains a large number of tools. Let me tell you some of them. The first tool is Metasploit. This widely used penetration testing framework is a favorite for a reason. It includes a vast library of exploits that can target vulnerabilities in networks and operating systems. Metasploit is primarily a command line tool, but it also includes a GUI package called Armitage that makes using Metasploit more convenient and possible. The next tool is Nmap. Nmap is a network reconnaissance application that maps and discovers hosts, networks, and services. It assists users in conducting vulnerability assessments of networks and enhancing network security. Burp Suite is also a very famous tool. Burp Suite is a comprehensive platform designed for the purpose of identifying vulnerabilities and doing security testing on online applications. The suite streamlines repetitious work in all tests and enables users to conduct more thorough examinations using manual and semi-automated testing methods. The final tool of our list is Hydra. Hydra is an open source tool that can perform rapid dictionary attacks against more than 50 protocols. It was developed by the hacker group The Hacker's Choice in 2000 as a proof of concept to demonstrate how easy it is to exploit weak passwords on network services. This is just a glimpse of the extensive toolkit available in Kali Linux. The tools are categorized for specific tasks such as password cracking, information gathering, and wireless attacks. And the best part is that they're all completely free to use. While Kali Linux is a popular choice, it's not the only option for penetration testing and security auditing. Several other Linux distributions cater specifically to these needs. Here's a quick comparison. In the case of tools, Black Arch Linux reigns supreme in this category. It functions as a vast repository containing thousands of security tools, offering the most extensive toolkit. In case of updates, Black Arch Linux again takes the lead with its rolling release model. This approach delivers frequent updates, often daily, ensuring ensuring you have access to the latest security tools and fixes. In ease of use, Kali Linux shines. Designed with user-friendliness in mind, it offers a relatively easy installation process, intuitive interface, and readily available documentation. On the other hand, Athena OS caters more towards experienced Arch Linux users. Its base system is built upon Arch, and while it provides a pre-configured pen testing environment, some familiarity with Arch is beneficial. In summary, if you are a beginner, then use Kali Linux. If if you are an advanced user, you should use Black Arch Linux. If you're already comfortable with Arch, Athena OS offers a pre-configured pen testing environment built upon your existing knowledge base. All right, everyone, that's all we have for today. Remember, knowledge is power, so keep learning, stay safe online, and don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe for more cybersecurity content. Let me know in the comments what other ethical hacking topics you'd like to see covered next. Until next time, happy hacking.